Hello, hello, hello. When you record something, you have to get it right. And sometimes, you know, trial and error, you get it right. It's, it's fine. Not a problem. But some of the things people don't understand are a little bit subtle. So I thought I'd do this quick video just so that you can actually see, hear and feel. No, we can't feel because it's not, not feely vision. But you can see and you can hear what the differences are and maybe just have a bit of a laugh. OK, then. Today it's going to be behind the round window. Ladies and gentlemen, name that, that tone. tone. Yeah, so what I've got here, quite nice and simple, got to keep it simple, got here Audacity Trace. Right, here we've got an Audacity Trace, and you can see here there's four basic sections to it. And I'm going to show you each one in turn and show you what it sounds like and then what it looks like. And then you can, we'll try and tie that together with why it's important. This is four totally distinct tones. They're all one kilohertz. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? If they're all one kilohertz tones, surely it's just one kilohertz tones. Why they look different? Well, you know how everybody talks about vinyl and CDs and tapes all sounding different and various things that make a difference? Well, this is the alchemy of audio. We'll go for a deep dive on this one. This is what most people would expect to see as being a one kilohertz tone. If we zoom in, you can see it's a nice sinusoidal wave. Ever so nice. There we go. And for the musical purists, one kilohertz is very close to C6, which is a thousand of 46. And it's similar to plucking a guitar string. Gives you that nice rounded tone. When we're playing back one of the tests on the tapes on my other videos, normally I show you the audacity trace and we then have a look at the Spectrum analysis. Well, let's have a look at the spectrum analysis on this one. Here we go. You, you can see on here in real time how we do it. So select a bit of the trace and then we drop down on analyze and boom, there we go. There it is in small window. Click on maximize and there we are. And so a one kilohertz sine wave gives you just this one spike. On now to number two. And we can see there, I'm going to just zoom in on that. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And here we have a very similar looking waveform, except that it's, well, it's a bit spiky, isn't it? Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Now let's move over to number three. This is number three. So here we go. Bit of zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Bumbity, bumbity, bum, just like that. <clears throat> And now we can see that it's also a bit spiky, but it's sort of leading over. Those, those patterns, by the way, is the sum rate. That's how it should look. And it's a nice, simple, triangular shape. It's called a sawtooth. Then this one is the final one we're going to look at. This is zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And we've got square waves. Absolutely square waves. They go from plus to minus to plus to minus in, almost instantaneously which is quite quite good fun really and that's the way that works so now let's go back and have a look we've seen the the one for the sine wave let's see what we can see now here let's analyze this one this is the triangle wave oh well hang on there was only this is still a one kilohertz signal and where, well, where did they all come from? And what are they? They are on every other every other spike, which is quite interesting. Okay, so then we go on to the next one. This was the sawtooth, and what have we got here? Uh, click on the right buttons. Come on, Gary, get yourself sorted. Right here we go. Boom, boom, and boom. <gasps> Flip here now, look at those, look. Every, every 
one of those marks has got a spike on it. This is still a one kilohertz signal. Okie dokie, let's go zoom out from there. Just to prove that it really was that. That's your, that's your sawtooth waveform. And now we'll go on to the next one. Eventually. Okay, here we go. Right. This one's just square waves. And let's have a look. See what it's, that's got. Drop down analysis. Click on. Flipping out. Look at that. It's very furry and it's on every... That's the harmonics for you. It's your own harmonics. So that is still a one kilohertz waveform. So how is that possible? Well, I told you, it's alchemy. That's why things are the way they are. And that's why things are important, which seem irrelevant when somebody's telling you about it. You say, oh, you've know, you got a bit of harmonic distortion. Well, what does that mean? Well, yeah, it means that. That is exactly what it means. Now, on to the game show. This is the bit where we do name that tone. Do, do, do. La, la, la. Just doing a bit of getting you in the mood there. So, here we go. We're going to play the tones that have been recorded, and it's up to you to tell me what they are. So, let's get stuck in. Okay, tone pickers, is this one, two, three, or four? Here we go. Just a reminder, these are all one kilohertz tones. So there you have it. But what does that actually mean? What's the actual tones that you've been hearing? So was it one, two, three, four, or what? Answers to be revealed shortly. Which one was that? Now, what is this one? Okay, so that was a pure sign. Now, looking at this, this is from a tape recording, and you can see the harder you push the tape, the more you damage the signal. What's been your experience with this sort of thing? Have you had disappointing results from tapes that you thought should do better? If that's given you anything to think about, maybe you'd like to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you another time. Cheers.